What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 130 and in today's episode as you can see we are ending season 5 in Career Mode with Milan, our first season with the Italian side and we're playing our final game of the Serie A season and also the Tim Cup final which will be coming straight after this one. Because the final game of the season does come first, we secured the title in the last episode though so this game meant effectively nothing as we were already crowned champions and Empoli as well, the visitors were safe from relegation so the game didn't really mean anything for the teams but it did mean something for one player and that's our captain Marco Ryan Taller because you would have seen before the game here he was still chasing that Serie A golden boot right now in third place he scored as many goals as Higuain is in second but of course he's uh, played more games than the Argentine that's why he's in third and Braithwaite is currently top of the scoring charts with 19 goals so coming to the game Ryan Taller our skipper desperate to cap off what will be a fantastic season for him by winning the golden boot as well as the Serie A title for Milan. It gives the opening goal of the game as well as stroke of half-time to make it 1-0. And then two minutes after the restart, Empoli would equalise here through Brown a day, which I thought was really, really, well, in a way, kind of nice because it's always nice for me when I see former strikers I've used in career mode score against me. And Brown a day, for those of you to watch my FIFA 15 career mode, played for West Bromwich Albion, of course, like in real life. And, well, he was someone I called upon quite often before his serious injury. So Brown a day scoring against me this year, scored for me last year and makes it Milan 1, Empoli 1. So Empoli would equalise here but Hashi Mastor would give us the lead once again in the 54th minute. A really nice finish here by the youngster getting played the ball through and smashing it past the goalkeeper to make it 2-1. So Ryan Tyler of course wanting the golden boot but still glad to know that we would retake the lead here for his teammate. Nice little ball through as well and a really good finish by Hashi Mastor who hopefully next season we will get more game times. So I continue to uh, train his stamina like I've been for the most uh, part of the season and hopefully next season we'll get more game times time for us because he's been really good late on this year but he went in the 78th minute here Maori plays an absolutely fantastic ball out wide towards Ryan Taylor what a free ball that was chip free ball even and Ryan Taylor cuts the inside to get his second goal of the game so Marco Ryan Taylor with the final league appearance of the season here desperate for a hat trick gets his second goal of the game and that gives him goal number 20 of the season as well Braithwaite of course was top coming into this game with 19 goals so I was wondering whether two goals would be enough for Ryan Taylor and whether he would win the golden boot or not as technically as things stood he would go into first place, although we don't know what Torino are doing and whether Braithwaite scored or not. But either way, it's Milan 3 Empoli 1. That's the most important thing. And later on in the game, he almost got his hat-trick as well. And that would have been such a great way to end it this season. Ryan Taylor scoring a hat-trick on the final day. But unfortunately, his shot was saved by the goalkeeper. And Jose Mauro, who came off the bench, turned in the rebound and made it 4-1. So Ryan Taylor cut inside from the right once again. This time, the goalkeeper has his number. But the rebound was turned in by Jose Mauro. So 4-1 to Milan. And this is where the game would finish as well, final score at the San Siro, full-time result, Milan 4, Empoli 1, and we do win on the final day of the season, and I do believe our streak in the league is something ridiculous now, like 7 or 8 or possibly even 9 wins in a row, we've been on such a great run of form in the league regardless, played so well late on this season, and as you can see right here, the celebrations do begin as we thoroughly deserved them after a very successful campaign, so we win the Serie A title, really, really pleased with that, of course it was secured in the last episode, but good to know we didn't slip up on the final day, did get a win if nothing else for uh, for reasons just to make sure that your title celebrations are even sweeter as we end the season with a win a good convincing 4-1 victory much deserved win as well and really good to see so Ryan Tyler lifts his first trophy as captain of Milan very very pleased with that and again more to come hopefully we've got a Tim Cup final to come next which you'll see in today's episode as well and of course next season as well I'll be staying with Milan, I'm not going to leave to a new club, I will stay with the Italian side and hopefully we'll be putting up a better show in Europe as well after getting knocked out by Barcelona in the quarter final stages this season but either way we won the game by four goals to one good to see again it was a bit of a trivial game really didn't mean too much I just wanted to see the title celebrations and also try and get Ryan Taylor a couple of goals as well which we did he scored twice on the final day and I was wondering whether that would be enough to see him win the golden boot or not we will see in just a moment's time either way confirmation there we did win the league title uh, Roma Napoli and Juventus way off the pace this season they have to do a lot better next season they do want to compete for the title only the two 
two Milan sides, really Milan and Inter, were going for it late on during the season. But as for the golden boot, it was won by Marco Ryan Taller. Get in, those two goals on the final day do secure it. Marco Ryan Taller this season added goals to his game like I needed him to do, like I wanted him to do. And as you can see, he did win the golden boot with 20 and Braithwaite ended up finishing one goal behind with 19. So that is fantastic to see, isn't it? What a way to end this season. Not only did Ryan Talley get to lift some silverware with the trophy, but also won the golden boot as well and a show of his dominance this season in a Milan shirt. So really pleased with that. And a great season overall as well, Milan, so far right now. You know, winning the Serie A, very pleased with that. Now at the Tim Cup final to come as well. Champions League again was a disappointment getting knocked out in the quarterfinals. The ball wants to reach the semifinals, but either way, it wasn't terrible for us. And uh, either way, in my opinion, just winning silverware this season was good to see. That's what the board wanted, and that's exactly what we have done. But either way, as you can see right here, we're going to the Tim Cup final for the second part of today's episode. This is going to be a live game as well, so look forward to it. It does make the episode very long indeed, so you don't have to watch all of it, all of it if you don't want to. But either way, hopefully you enjoy it regardless. Tim Cup final to come, and hopefully we'll be getting our second trophy of the season with Milan. All right, guys, so welcome to the live part of episode number 130 of Career Mode. We've got the Tim Cup final with Milan here against Torino as we go in search of the domestic double. Uh, we got to the final by beating Hellas Verona by three goals to two over two legs. Torino overcame Sassuolo on penalties 4-3 after the two legs finished 3-3 on aggregate. So Milan versus Torino for the Tim Cup final. Excited for this, of course. Uh, I managed Torino in FIFA 15, so really looking forward to this, and hopefully we'll be able to win a double after we of course secured the Serie A title in May and of course had the final day which you would have seen in this episode prior to this game. So taking on Torino here and uh, I know I natter on quite a bit before the game gets started so if you just want to watch the game and uh, don't want to listen to me natter on I don't blame you start uh, for starters um, just skip to a time which will be displayed for you on the screen right now um, and you can just skip to the game and you don't have to listen to me drone on but uh, still taking on Torino really excited for this um, Again, I might I might actually put both teams in there. Can I have... Eh, I'm actually quite tempted to put the teams in the classic kits. I don't know whether you guys are the same, but I like using the classic kits. So I'm going to put them in the classic kits. I like doing that. But um, yeah, Tecno Torino, really excited for this. And of course, going for the double as well. You know, I am a little bit disappointed we weren't able to get further than the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Don't forget that the board did set our aims to reach the semifinals of the Champions League this season. So in the board's eyes, we failed our European objective in our first season. And when you spend over £80 million in total in two transfer windows, that's not great. So pretty disappointed about that. But of course, if we can win ourselves two trophies, the board should be quite happy with it come, uh, come the end of the season because of course they didn't even set our aims of winning a trophy this season uh, in the league they just wanted us to qualify the Champions League in the Tim Cup I think it was the semi-finals as well so if we can uh, go ahead and deliver two trophies I'm pretty sure I'll still be pleased despite the failure in Europe now I was going to play a backup side for this game I've been playing a backup side in the entirety of this competition but I don't really want to risk it. I don't really want to risk it. Torino, of course, is going to be the toughest side we've faced in the competition so far. And, of course, Torino, I've managed them before. They're a good side, and I like Torino. So do I want to show respect and put my first 11 out there, or should I completely change the side? Um, I, I might play a couple of uh, backup players. I think Gabriel deserves a starting goal, as much as we all love Djokovic, because, obviously... Gabriel's been keeping the net for us. Uh, keeping the net, I never said that before. Uh, keeping uh, keeping the, uh, the, uh, the shots out for us uh, during this competition so far, all through the year, all through the competition apart from one game which Donos Comento played. So I might give Gabriel a start because it might be his final appearance as well if I decide to not give him a contract. Um, Abate could possibly play as well because obviously he's in his uh, final year, he's retiring. So let's give Abate a start, put Capello on the bench, push the Chilio to left back. Um, I think Mastor should start. I think Mastor should start. He He's had a couple of good games in this competition, of course. Hasn't been a first-team regular, despite being on the bench in most games due to his stamina. So let's give him a store a start. Let's take out Polly or Bonaventura. Let's take out Polly, and they'll have Bonaventura on the left and Mastor on the right there. Mastor can play deeper in the CM role, even though he's better pushed up. And let's not start Martial either. Let's start Fakir. Uh, Martial this season, not the best, because his broken ankle didn't help. But uh, Fakir's not been great either. Neither's Lacadia, really. None of our strikers have done too well. But we'll start Fakir anyway, as he's been our best sort of out-and-out -out striker this year in terms of the goals he has scored. We'll have El Shirai on the left, start to come a bit into form late on, and Ryan Taylor on the right, and that'll That'll do, I think. Um, possibly Bangadino starting, actually, because bangadino has been playing centre-back all through this competition. He's been doing quite well. He's been a bit of an underrated pickup for us this season on a free transfer. So let's start Bangadino, and uh, let's take out Rigani or Siligardi. I like both of these centre-backs. We'll take out Rigani, though, and um, we'll make our side a little bit weaker and uh, play a few more of the... Um 
the youngsters, if you will. So there we go. It's, it's, it's a good enough side to win this one. We won't make any more changes than that. Um, in fact, you know what? We'll take Suzo off the bench because I just, I just don't get on with Suzo in this game. We'll take Suzo off the bench. And Resco Dani, I think he deserves to be on the bench as well because um, he's, he's, he's been a nice little backup player. Maybe meet off Nilsson as well, Ibra's region. Um, who will we take out? Let's take out Capello, actually, and just have a really attacking, attack-minded bench as well. And, uh, and that will do for our bench lineup. And that's the team we'll go with. And it, it should be good enough to overcome, um, overcome Torino. But either way, we'll see what we can do as we hopefully record a double with Milan. So anyway, guys, episode number 130 of Career Mode, and I want to say a massive, massive thank you for your incredible support during the series. Um, I know I say it every single time we do a final, but you guys are absolutely incredible, and I really am so grateful to our fantastic subscribers like you guys. I say it all the time, and I say it because it's true. Without you guys, I could not do YouTube, you know, and uh, I just, I, I think it's pretty uh, pretty incredible to know we've got 130 episodes in the series, and there are so many of you guys that have watched every single one and are still continuing to watch each one that comes out. I really do appreciate it so much. It means an awful lot to me. And again, without your support, without your likes, comments, and of course, the most important thing, views, I, I couldn't do this. And it means so much to me to be able to create content for you guys and uh, to be able to entertain you every single day. I appreciate your support so much and uh, you've shown such incredible support during this series. And I will tell you this right now, I am potentially going to make next season the last one in this series. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, no way, man, seriously, I'm still loving this series and I really appreciate it very much but I'm starting to wonder whether I can take this series any further than it's got to right now. Um, potentially I could but for me I'm starting to think that maybe ending it next season and making sure it doesn't sort of drag on too long is quite important. I've always been someone who believes that always leave them wanting more is, what is, uh, is something you should uh, try and do as a creator to make sure the content doesn't become stale at some point and it dampens the whole kind of reflection of the series. So for me, I'm starting to think that maybe we should make next season the last one. And I've said a few times before now, I do believe that YouTube just isn't right for a long series anymore. People sort of drop off interest really quickly nowadays, particularly in FIFA series too. So maybe next season will be the last one, but I wanted to let you guys know anyway during this season at some stage, and uh, I thought I'd let you, know, I'd let you guys know in the Tim Cup final. So I do want to say massive thank you to the support anyway. I really do appreciate it. Next season may not be the last one, but it probably will be. But um, if you have any opinions or just you know your general feedback really on whether you want a series to continue, do let me know in the comment section down below. If you want the series to continue longer the next season, and then let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, otherwise, you know, just just tell me why you agree with me that we should make this one the uh, make next one the last one. But anyway, guys, Team Cup final here with Milan against Torino. I'd love to get underway, but there are two officials just stood at the bottom of the screen that aren't really doing anything. I think they're posing for pictures because they're statuesque, really. This is um, this is great. I know I could press the X button and it will get rid of this, but I I just I wonder sometimes. I wonder, like, what are they doing? What are they actually doing? They must have stood there after the handshakes were done. Like, seriously, they're waiting for the referee to say, come on over, guys, because we've got a game to play. Or, okay, camera's cut to Ryan Taylor. What's going to happen, happen next? Should I just press the X button? Let's just press the X button. Okay, so here we go then. Torino versus Milan. Stadio Olimpico. Tim Cup final. Let's get ourselves the second show of the season. Let's get it done. Forza Milan. Let's make it two from three in our first season with Milan. Afonso through towards Bonassi, and Bonassi takes it round one, plays it through towards his man out wide, and Abate showing his age a little bit. is caught out there, and the cross comes in, and the header by Bas Baselli goes just wide of the post and what a chance for Daniela Baselli to open the scoring for Torino. The central midfielder had a brilliant chance there to give Torino the lead but couldn't the target and it is still nil-nil. Afonso for Torino inside towards Bonassi and they keep holding the ball nicely as Aqua finds Chioza and it'll go towards Zapacosta and that's a terrible pass which is cut out and Bonaventura should win that in the air and does and now is Shirai through towards Bonaventura and a great chance here and what a ball by Bonaventura and Hashi Mas store opens the scoring and what a ball that was <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that celebration before what <laughs> they're all doing it as well I've never done that before what an assist by Bonaventura look at the way he threaded that ball through the gap of the two Torino players and Hashim the store he's got involved quite a lot in the Torino team later on get to start in this game and scores the opening goal of the game what an assist by Bonaventura and <laughs> What a celebration. I don't think I've ever done that before. At least I've never seen me do it before. And uh, Hashim Mastor opens the scoring. And I'm very pleased. That is a crazy celebration. I swear I've never done that before. I think I've seen people do it against the United team. But 
That's that's crazy. That was a bizarre way of celebrating the opening goal in the cup final. But Mastor doesn't mind. The team don't mind because they are doing it with him. Torino nil, Milan one. Hashi Mastor the goal. Bonaventura with a lovely assist and a great celebration as well. One nil, Milan getting. <laughs> oh dear. So free kick Torino, final chance of the half. So Costa swings it into the centre and Donnarumma has to head it behind for a corner. So this will be the final piece of action in the first half. Can Torino grab themselves an equalising goal? We won't have time for a break. So we've got to defend this one. In comes the corner to the centre. Gabriel doesn't deal with it and the header goes up in the air. City Guardi gets it away. Not fully dealt with. And it'll come to Afonso. Ryan Talla is there. And we do see out the half. So a bit of a heart and mouth moment there. Gabriel not dealing with that corner very convincingly. But we got it away. And that does in the half. So half time here at the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. We are level. Uh, sorry, we are level. We're in front by a goal to nil. Mistor with the opening goal. Three minutes before the break. Great assist by Bonaventura. Good finish by, uh, I think, the Italian-born Moroccan international. Is that right? Or the Moroccan-born it it Italian international? I think it's the first one. Italian-born Moroccan international. But anyway, Mistor get the goal. That's the most important thing. And we do lead at the break. So not the best of first stars in all honesty. Not too many chances to report. But we do lead by a goal to nil. And uh, hopefully more action to come in the second half most importantly though hopefully we'll still be leading come the end of 90 minutes and we'll be celebrating our second trophy of the season come on Milan let's see it out in the second half Baselli for Torino picks it up can he get a chance here Ryan Taller shuts him down still Baselli inside shot comes in good save by Gabriel and it comes inside towards Afonso and again Gabriel is there and finally Torino gets some shots on goal in this second half but Gabriel makes a really impressive double save and keeps us in the lead by a goal to nil really good couple of saves there by the Brazilian and then a good commanding uh, claim from that cross as well and it's still one goal to nil so a couple of great chances late on for Torino but we still lead by a goal to nil thanks to Gabriel making a couple of great saves as Dani goes down the left-hand side and is tackled and Torino win the ball back. And now Janssen for Torino through towards Figueroa. They've got to push it now. I mean, they've, they've shown right there in that instance that they can get chances late on, but they've got to start pushing it. They've got to start going for it now because there's not long left in the game and the clock is our friend. And if they keep on doing this, I'm fine. You know, if they keep on doing this, I'm totally fine. They, they are just not... They're just refusing to give the ball up. And they, I'm sorry, but you've got to play more urgently. You are so, 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 so close to exiting this final in a whimper that you know two good shots there put Gabriel under pressure but like they're cross fielding the ball backwards I mean come on mate you've, you've got to start attacking us now like we we're, we're just watching them pass the ball around with no urgency at all and they're going to get the ball away any second now just watch it we're waiting for them to get the ball away as Paragini gets on the ball there we go Abate wins it back here and now we're on the break through to meet of Nilsson and Ibra's region has a chance to seal the game here it's Sweden versus Sweden and I think our Swedish striker is going to come out on top but well, he almost did he hit the post and Torino you know, get the ball away I'm sorry but you just you can't do that if you want to get back in a final with so few minutes to go you can't just pass the ball around and just you know expect it to let you have another few shots you've got to start showing more urgency we're gonna I'm sorry but we've got seven minutes to go now and I was hoping we'd make the uh, the final few minutes a bit more dramatic but um, they've done they've done very little apart from those two shots and this is why if you were 16 is a broken game in my opinion because there's just nowhere near enough urgency and the the AI just do not care about the result barely and that is why this game is just such a broken one in my opinion but anyway I'm gonna make a sub here Verdi will come on for Bonaventura and um, hopefully with six and a half minutes to go I'll be proved wrong and Torino will at least put us under a little bit more pressure Miss Store here flicks it through towards Ryan Taller and Ryan Taller towards Bonaventura. I think it was Bonaventura, no, it wasn't. It's going to come to Abati down the right side anyway. He's got Ryan Taller with him. Bonaventura's not even on the pitch, mate. As Ryan Taller gets onto the ball, he'll play it through towards Mitov Nilsson. And this is a chance to seal the game. Mitov Nilsson saved by Padelli, but he'll tap in the rebound. And that is going to do it. Mitov Nilsson with the goal. And we are going to win the Tim Cup by two goals to nil. Ryan Taller played in three. He was one on one. Good save initially by Padelli, but it came straight back to him and we are going to see out the game by two goals to nil so Torino I hate to say it but they just did not do anywhere near enough in this second half they had a couple of attempts and put Gabriel under a tiny bit of pressure but for the most part basically just accepted fate after we took a one goal lead meet of Nilsson Ibra's regen comes off the bench secures the trophy and we are going to make it a double here with Milan absolutely fantastic Torino nil Milan two and that will do it 
and I'm pretty sure the referee will blow for full time any second now, so you may as well just keep on chatting whilst we're waiting for the full time whistle as Benassi finds Davidson. I think the two minutes have been played, haven't they? He's either Costa is on the ball. There we go, and there is the full time result then. Torino nil, Milan two, and we win the Tim Cup and complete a double with Milan. So I'm really, really pleased. Don't get me wrong, I'm very pleased to get a double with Milan in our first season. That is fantastic, but I'm, I'm just so frustrated that this is the way the game is played this year in FIFA because it's just so like it really is so pointless because there's just no attacking urgency from the opposition when they're trailing the game and needing to get back into it and it just makes absolutely no sense to me but either way let's not let's not complain when we've won a trophy we've won it and I'm really pleased with that so obviously don't get me wrong disappointed to have gone out in the Champions League quarterfinals to Barcelona I was really hoping to at least get to the semi-finals in our first season but to win a double in our first season the board didn't even ask us to win a trophy don't forget they didn't ask us to get any silverware whatsoever but we've won two trophies the Serie A and the Coppa Italia as well and in my opinion despite the failure in Europe I would still say overall this has been a successful season so Marco Ryan Taller is going to go ahead and lift the Tim Cup we have won the Coppa Italia fantastic stuff and our first season with Milan is again what I would consider successful even though we did not do the job in Europe so really pleased with that and uh, a bit of a quiet game for Ryan Taller in all honesty he won't get credit with the assist for Mitov Nielsen's goal because Bedelli saved the first shot and it came straight back to him but uh, either way he does lift the trophy and uh, what a breakout season he had this year he was absolutely phenomenal uh, yeah, phenomenal, and his best one ever in this series so far so impossibly the penultimate, seri uh, penultimate season of the series we win ourselves two trophies in Milan next season though you know exactly what we're going to be going for the Champions League we cannot afford to go out in the quarterfinals or any, or any round pri prior to that next season we've got to get ourselves at least into the final next year in my opinion and of course I'll be desperate to retain both the Tim Cup and the Serie A as well so to end this episode here we're going to have these celebrations then I'm going to go show you the uh, squad report the final one uh, of the uh, of the season and then we're going to go ahead and end the season as well so no matter what happens we will be at Milan next season we're not going to leave I want to win them the Champions League final but um, either way it's uh, it's just nice to know that in possibly our penultimate season we have completed the double but again you can see these stats here with uh, with Torino you know only four shots in the entire game only two fell on target and it's just it's just not good enough really is it from a team that needs to get back into uh, the game anyway man the match in this game I'm not really sure who to give it to I'd probably, probably Silly Gardi or Bangadino because like Silly Gardi got a 6.8 right but he was really really good at the back and so was Bangadino like Bangadino in this game was phenomenal like he put in some really good tackles won the ball back quite a few times as did Silly Gardi as well so the fact that these guys get 6.8 and 6.6 they're not bad ratings or anything, but I think EA, uh, you know, just, just don't value defenders on this game very much because they, they they had really good games. And I'd say that one of those two as a man of the match, in my opinion, the uh, lower rated of the two, Bangadino, deserves it at 6.6. .6. I thought he was really, really good. But uh, either way, we win the Tim Cup by two goals to nil. And uh, so to end the episode and end the season, I'll show you the squad report and I'll show you the, uh, the stats and the attributes and the uh, and the, uh, the competitions as well, who did what. And, uh, and there you go. So... Gabriel is, of course, out of contract. That's the first thing we'll look into because he's he's actually done okay come the end of the season. He's out of contract. He is on the transfer list. He wants a wage increase. He'll be leaving the club in the summer if we don't give him a new contract. So what does he want? He wants... He only wants 10 grand a week extra, but the problem with Gabriel is that he wants to be an important first-team player like his current contract suggests. So he's not going to be an important first-team player here. Djokovic is here instead. So I'd be happy giving him a sporadic first-team player status or even squad rotation status, but he doesn't seem to want it. So he rejected the first contract we offered back in January or December even. So we'll give him a new deal, a new three-year deal, because I like him as a backup goalkeeper. Um, ironically, despite making one mistake in that final in, uh, from the corner, he is quite a safe pair of hands at times. But if he doesn't accept a squad rotation status or not getting one at all I'm going to have to let him go because I can't I can't afford to offer him a promise be an important first team player status and, and, and not fulfilling it so we'll, uh, we'll see what he says to that contract anyway and uh, see if he decides to stay here or decide to uh, to go on to uh, a new team come the end of his contract or in this year's FIFA going to the free agents pool and despite being more than good enough to play for another team just accepting that you'll never play professional football again anyway uh, let's show you the final squad report and uh, the final budgets and all that sort of stuff as well uh, Gabriel's Gabriel see Gabriel come on mate just just stay as my backup goalkeeper you know seriously mate your coach is number one he may be uh nine years younger but just 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 be his understudy why won't why don't you not understudy just backup goalkeeper but anyway uh, let's 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 have a look at the squad report then to um 
to end the season off. I don't know why I just backed out of that. Let's end the, uh, the squad report. So I'll show you the attributes and the stats of the players as well. And I think I'll give you my rundown as well this season of how the players did too. Because we made so many signings in uh, in this first season. You know, we spent over £80 million. We spent £69.5 million in the summer. And then in January, after the sale of Nkulu, we spent about, what was it, like £17 million. So in total, we spent about £85, £86 million, pounds, I would say, in two transfer windows. That's a lot of money to be splashing with Milan. And, you know, some of the players just did not perform this season. Some of them did. And uh, I'll, I'll give you my rundown of what players I think deserve to stay here for the foreseeable future and what players may be getting shifted on uh, at the start of next season. Because, again, we will be staying with Milan for at least next season. If we do continue this career mode after next season, we might go somewhere else the season after next. But next season, we'll definitely be staying here with Milan. As Ryan Tally, you can see, it grew three ratings this season. And uh, I do tip into uh, to make 90 at some stage, but I think it won't be until December 2020. That's what I said. And we'll see if I'm right. So let's take a look at the stats of the players as well. Jakovic was a great signing for us. £4 million plus Muslera. I said I wasn't too sure if that would be a good deal or not because obviously Muslera at the time was a better goalkeeper at 83 overall and still technically is as well presuming the fact he hasn't uh, gone down, presuming, assuming he hasn't gone down in ratings. Uh, but Jokovic was fantastic ever since he came in. 15 clean sheets in 22 games and averaging 7.5 was, I mean, just an incredible season he had since coming in. And I've got so much faith in our Canadian being our number one for many years to come. Um, Gabriel and Don Escamento, again, only played a handful of games between them, so not really worth talking about, but hopefully Gabriel does stay at least. I think it was quite good for us in the Tim Cup. Uh, Abate's retiring. Calabria, not too many appearances. Ruka Garni came in for £10 million. And I have to say, he was a little bit disappointing. Uh, not as good as I was hoping. He kept 13 clean sheets in 19 games, don't get me wrong. But in terms of the centre-back partnership between these two, Sidi Gardi, in my opinion, was far better, despite being a few ratings lower. So Rugani wasn't the best, wasn't too convinced by him. But, you know, he's, he's, he's staying here. I'm not going to sell him or anything. But hopefully he'll turn out to be a good buy next season. But Sidi Gardi has been one of our biggest bargains of the season so far. Uh, £3 million plus Simic. He's the guy I swapped him with. Couldn't remember a few episodes ago but 32 games in the league and 21 clean sheets he says he averaged a 6.5 but I've said before defenders are criminally underrated in this year's FIFA in terms of what the uh, the EA give them for a match rating if you will Silly Gardi was really good and uh, he was definitely been one of our biggest bargains this season Bangadino as well uh, in the games he played did quite well he saw in the Tim Cup final one man the match was really good um, Eli haven't really used him but Nusi same as that same as that the Shilio quite an underrated player for us a full back field and left back and right back as well. Also played him at centre-back, uh, switched him to centre-back in one of our games during the game. Very good defensive player. Really like this guy. He's staying here, obviously. Really good fullback. Do like him a lot. Capello, uh, what a bargain he was. Free transfer. Played the majority of the season in league games. Only missed out of five league games and kept 22 clean sheets in 33 league games and also picked up a couple of assists as well. I will be looking for a better left-back next season, but you know he was really good for us anyway. And I think his replacement will probably be Jethro Williams as he was part of the Fiorentina side. He got relegated. Uh, Antone's retiring. Uh, Suzo, disappointing. Uh, used him quite a few times. 20 games in total. Didn't really do too much for us. One goal and three assists. Not too bad, but I'm not really a fan of him, to be honest. And Yanazai is coming in next season, so Suzo might end up getting sold. He is unhappy as well and wants more game time, which I'm not prepared to give him. Donnarumma, uh, one of the bargain buyers of the season. Eight assists, five goals and 43 games. Very, very decent midfielder for us. Uh, popped up a few headers as well. Uh, five of his goals I think three were headers so that's quite interesting for a player that's only five foot ten but uh, still good season for him PLO's region did quite well Bonaventura and Polly not too bad as CMs but one of those will probably be leaving come the, uh, the summer most likely Polly uh, Modic is going anyway Mastali should be going too Mari signed a new contract not too bad of a midfielder Kuka's retiring Felicioli surely going next season the store actually sort of turned it around the second half of the season first half didn't do too much for us in the second half looked a lot better scored in that Tim Cup final as well good to see in fact, I think, I think, yeah, okay, he got two goals in five Tim Cup appearances. That's not too bad. And uh, not, a, not a bad player for us at all, Mr. Uh, Verdi might be leaving next season. We did give him a new contract, but he wants to leave. He keeps on saying that he's not getting enough game time wants to leave. So next season, we'll try and sell him on. He could have gone in January to Toulouse, but decided not to. Uh, Martial, mm, not really, did. Uh, didn't really do the business for us this season. I wanted him to. I bought him as our new striker. Gave Manchester United Carlos Backer and £3.5 million for him. 
said it was a bit of a risk. He broke his ankle two games into his career and he came back during December time but only managed to score six goals in 22 games, which broken ankle or not, in my opinion, for our main out and out striker wasn't really that great. Five assists isn't too bad for a striker. Um, you know, I wanted to score the goals, but getting five assists isn't too bad to help his teammates out, but didn't really do too well. But I'll keep him for next season. I probably won't sell him and hopefully we'll get it sorted. Fakia was probably our best out and out striker this season. Nine goals in 37 games, like Martial, not the best of returns, really. Did get five assists like Martial. Neither of these two convinced me very well. I might sell one of these two next season and get someone else in instead. Probably for Kia, to be honest, because he's, he's not growing. Oh, he is actually growing now, isn't he? But he wasn't growing for the most of the season. But either way, we'll have to wait and see. Um, they, they weren't terrible, but not too good. Uh, Lacadia, terrible, though, unfortunately. F uh, four goals in 31 games and three assists as well. I think all of his goals, apart from one, came in the first few games as well. He went on a massive goal drought during this season and he just did not cut the mustard at all thankfully though we only bought it for four million pounds so we can sell him next season to make a profit guaranteed but unfortunately I was sort of thinking he might be a bargain buy for us and in the end he turned out to be nothing short of just a squad player at very very best not the best for us this season and he'll almost certainly be getting sold uh, Mitov Nilsson came in though for £5 million plus for Tagner four goals in 12 games two of which came off the bench uh, sorry three of which came off the bench actually only one goal came for a start uh, in the uh, in the Serie A every other goal was coming from the bench and that's what that's what you want in a backup striker like that someone that can come off the bench and impact a game like that so Mitov Tov Nilsson as a backup striker, £5 million plus per Tagner, in my opinion, really good deal. He's now up to a 77 overall. We're training his finishing stat right now, getting it up, and um, he's he's looking like a great buy for the future, and Ibra's regen is definitely part of the furniture at Milan. Portillo, what a pickup he was on a free transfer. He may have only scored two goals, but he got four assists in 13 games as well. That's six direct contributions in 13 games. Didn't play many minutes this season, but whenever he did play, put in a really good shift and also grew free, rat free ratings as well. So Portillo, for me... You know, you may look at those stats and think he was surely nothing other than just a, an average squad player. No, I'm, I'm very happy with that. On a free transfer, he he provided what we needed, which was depth and uh, cover, and he did the job when we needed him to. So Portillo was a good pickup for us. Uh, fonto has been out on loan. Ryan Taylor, of course, the starter this season. 89 overall. He's growing three ratings, 56 million pounds. And this season, you can see, see by his stats here, he added goals to his game. He's never really been a prolific goal scorer, but this season, 25 goals in 47 games. One of the Sarah are golden boot. He got six assists as well to go along with those 25 goals in 47 appearances in all competitions. What a player he was. This season, he had his breakout season. In his first four seasons, yeah, he was okay. But in this season, he turned it up. He turned from being a good winger to a world-class one. Incredible, incredible, incredible season. And I'm so glad I signed him. I'm so glad I made him my captain because this guy is phenomenal. And he's just 22 years old. Absolutely extraordinary. And, um, Hopefully next season with Milan, he'll be lifting more trophies, but not damaging his back. Uh, El Shirao, as you can see, very disappointing this season. He came into some good form late on in the season, got three goals and four assists in 39 games, but that's nowhere near good enough for him. He was out for one month. He was sidelined for one month with injury, sprained his knee, I do believe. But other than that, I mean, he was very disappointing this season. Did not do anywhere close to what I was expecting. and was a bit of a letdown, to be honest. And uh, Rescaldani, like Portillo, uh, a, a free agent pickup, just like Bangor. Dino and Capello as well but he gave us solid minutes whenever he played he scored one goal in seven games that was off the bench as well grew two ratings he's not been a bad pickup on a free agent and when I signed these guys you know Rescaldani and Portillo and Bangadino I said they'll probably be squad players for us but they've been good squad players they haven't been let down at all they've been good squad players all the players we got for free this season all four of those players haven't been bad at all and Capello of course being a standout who was the first team left back this year and also grew free ratings as well so that's what I make of the players this season uh, of course a few of those players will be leaving even like I said, but uh, for the most part, I want to keep a lot of these players here and uh, develop this Milan squad and turn it into a fantastic one. So uh, the league table did finish like this, as you guys would have seen. We won it by six points, and as well, uh, in the Tim Cup, we won that as well. We beat Torino by two goals to nil. Uh, in the Copa Europe, Watford were beaten by Atletico Madrid. How about that? And also in the Champions League, PSG won this. I do remember, I saw it on the thingy. Uh, they won by two goals to one over Arsenal. And Barcelona, who beat us in the semis, uh, in the quarter, sorry, 
were knocked out in the semis by Arsenal. So interesting stuff. Um, either way, in the Europa League as well, the winners of that competition were, let's find out, it's usually someone like Spurs, but they're in the Champions League, so it won't be Spurs. It was Real Madrid. Real Madrid do not make the Champions League knockout stage in this year's uh, FIFA, or in my career at least. They never seem to be in the knockout stage of the, uh, the Europa League. What's going on there? Uh, Champions League, sorry, what's going on there? They won the Europa League, though. Fair enough, and, uh, and there you go. So let's go ahead and see if uh, uh, Gabriel's accepted his contract. He's declined it because he wants to understand his role at the club, and this is the problem we had before. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to be a squad rotation player, but... I'm sorry, but you're not going to be a first-team player. And I don't want to make him a promise that I'm not going to keep because he'll start to complain. And I never like to have unhappy players at my squad. So we'll see if he accepts the second one. Oh, God. I just... Like, I'm sorry, but I, I want him to be my backup goalkeeper. But he just he's not going to be a first-team goalkeeper. He's not going to be a first-team goalkeeper. So... We'll, we'll up his salary to 65 grand a week and we'll give him squad rotation and also a five clean sheet bonus. But he's not going to be a first team goalkeeper and I don't want to keep him if he's going to keep on complaining. So is he going to accept it this time? Uh, let's, have a, let's, have a, let's have a look. Is he going to accept it? Oh, Jesus. I, I, you know, because I know what you guys are thinking. I know most of you guys will be saying, you know, why not just, just give it to him? Ryan Tallard did not make the... Oh, yeah, he did. Uh, I know what you guys will be thinking. I know you guys will be saying, just, just give him the first team player status and then possibly sell him next season. But I don't... I never really like to do that, and I'd rather keep him here, to be honest. But do you know what? We we, we will go ahead and do that. I'll give him the important first-team player status, 60 grand a week. And if he starts to complain, do you know what I'll do? If he starts to complain next season, we'll sell him. If he doesn't, we'll keep him. So if he starts to kill off fast, which he most likely will, then we'll sell him. If he doesn't, then we'll keep him. So it's, it's up to Gabriel now. He, he's asked to be an important first-team player. I've told him it's not going to happen, but... Yeah, I, I really wish you could actually talk to your players in the game and just explain why, you know, they're not first-team players or, you know, when they say, can you play me in the next game? I'd like to say why you're not going to start, for example, but it's really, really annoying. But um, either way, he should accept that contract and uh, I'd imagine he'll be staying here. And, uh, yeah, there we go. He accepts his contract and we'll, we'll probably sell him next season because I can't afford to keep that promise to him as there's no way he's going to be a first-team goalkeeper ahead of Jakobic. So that basically does it then, guys. We're basically finishing the season here. Uh, the final budget ends up like this. Uh, full transfer budget will give us £27.2 million. A full wage budget will give us three hundred and no, four hundred no, 524000 And split down the middle, which is how we usually end it, will give us... 13 million and 262,000 on the wage budgets. Those are the budgets for the final season. And uh, next season, we've got some targets, but one guy, well, certainly looking to sign is going to be Jethro Williams. He will be one of my uh, my initial targets as he was part of the Fiorentina side that ended up getting relegated and went down to the Serie B. So he'll most likely be coming in and being our first choice left back and Capello will probably go ahead and drop to the bench. So that's going to end today's episode of Career Mode then, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. I don't think there's anything else I need to show you whenever I do the end of the season. There's always something I forget usually, but I don't think there's anything I need to show you guys. I've showed you the squad. I've showed you the, uh, the contracts. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Don't ask him Mento, by the way. He's not going to get a new deal. He played one game. He was all right, but I don't think we need to keep him. We'll look for someone better as a third-choice goalkeeper next season, and we'll let him go. But I don't think I need to do anything else other than this, so um, we're just going to leave it there. I might hire a youth scout for the final season, but I don't really see the point, to be honest. So we'll probably just leave it and maximize our budget for next season. So, yeah, we're going to leave it there. So thank you for watching, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. Oh, I just remembered one thing I was definitely going to show you before we ended today's episode was was the um, Watford's team. <laughs> I don't know why I snapped my fingers there. Watford's team. I wanted to show you what Watford's team looks like, and you would be surprised as well, because they have made some massive, massive changes. Uh, is it team stats? Yeah, it is team stats. I want to show you what Watford's team looks like. It's it's crazy. They've, they've made so many changes to it. It's bizarre. So let me go ahead and show you what Watford's team is like, and um, and you guys would be quite surprised. You know, we, We've only had one year away from Watford, and their team is crazy crazy different. As you can see here, they've got Musler in goal. Butland's been sold. So Musler and Bentley are their goalkeepers. Look at the strikers. Balotelli's gone as well. They've got Dini Benteke in the Kako and Felivi right now. Uh, Williams is still there. So is Neymar and, uh, and Conor Plianka. Um, but their team have had so many departures. Look at all the big names that used to play for Watford and no, more, no longer there anymore. They've brought Benteke, like I said, and uh, brought Gaetan as well. But so many players that used to play for Watford have now gone. It's it's crazy. They've had such a massive clear out. Klein's gone as well. Uh, it's such a massive clear out. It's it's bizarre how many players have decided to let go. But 
but um, let's, let's let's have you find out where they finished in the uh, in the table. Because I don't actually know. I don't actually know. I haven't checked. Let's see where Watford ended up in uh, in the Premier League after one season without my management. The AI probably completely butchered them. They finished in eighth place. They finished outside of the Champions League and the Europa League places. Wow, only seventeen wins in thirty eight games. That's that's crazy. The AI genuinely butcher teams on career mode so often. And Watford right now are way off the pace. That is absolutely crazy. And Middlesbrough set a record low for points. That's absolutely extraordinary. Watford finished outside of any European place. This, like The AI managers just butcher teams so much when you leave them. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. But... Um, Either way, that's Watford's team and their and their and their finish this season. And a final thing I want to show you as well is Canada's team too. Um, we've gone up to a three and a half star nation. Oh yeah, someone asked me how you can check what star you are for your team or nation. You go into the team sheet section and then you go to import team sheet and then you go ahead and find your team. So we're going to go to international and then choose Canada. And as you can see right here, you can see we've gone up to a three and a half star nation. So that's how you check your star rating in uh, in this year's FIFA. But uh, still, Canada, as you can see right here, are a three star nation right now. These are how the players are currently looking this is how i've got the first team set up haber is up to a 77 overall jeremy haber is a 77 overall and look at his technical stats my word this guy looks so so good and i might potentially get him back next season and uh play him in the middle with donnarumma as well but uh, anyway this this these are the uh, the young canadian players chapman's not bad uh haber's the best one of course 77 and jacob of course the monster a2 as well and uh you know a few of them have developed quite nicely they're into the 70s now which is really good to see but uh, and we're still way off where I was hoping to with Canada come the end of the season, but that's just how it is. And as you can see, Heinau is 75 overall in the, uh, the, uh, the the squad selection, so Fisk is 73 overall. But yeah, the, the, the Canadian youngsters are getting on. They're, they're doing okay. You see, most of these players are regens and new gens here that we've been uh, scouting ourselves. So they've done quite well. They, they, they've done okay, but um, a lot of them are, are nowhere near where I was hoping to see them. Haver and Jokos are the only two that have actually done really well during this series. But anyway, guys, I've been narrowing on for way too long so let's end this uh, here uh, thank you very much for watching the uh, episode guys really hope you have enjoyed it if you enjoyed today's episode of career mode then please do consider leaving likes and comments appreciate it and really the channel out much love to you all as always really do appreciate your support we'll be back for the new season very soon and um, yeah thanks for watching appreciate your likes and your views and your comments as always and I'll see you for the next episode of career mode very soon oh goal of the season is next goal of the season will be next